Oh. Might be bigger than I thought. I'd say that yesterday was the best best day so far between uh, going through the falls chain and then um, just having the most incredible fishing on Cotton Ippy where I'm at right now. I mean, I probably only did 12 miles, which is a pretty short day based on my potential route, but at the same time, like, totally worth it. Get to camp, have an awesome morning, get to camp by noon, and just fish till dark and seriously catch I, I don't know how many 30 plus inch pike i caught and we got four 20 20 to 22 inch walleye and then just a ton of eaters had a great walleye dinner last night so i mean that is a perfect canadian country day in my opinion so i don't know i'm gonna try to try to put some miles in today and i have to make a decision if i'm gonna go um on to my bailout or my second bailout route or if I want to try to go ahead and do the the whole loop that I was planning initially so I'm gonna see how I feel when I get there but once I commit I have no choice but to finish out the loop which I like the idea of that challenge but it's a lot of commitment because I'm gonna be a long way from civilization first wind of any sort I've had on the trip and with my luck, it's got my tail, which has been nice this morning. Kind of overcast. It's supposed to only be in the 70s today, which would be a nice break from all the 80s I've had the first few days. But no, I think this heat has been keeping the animals back. I haven't seen any moose or bear. Found, found that bear claw earlier in the trip, which was cool, but no moose or bear. Haven't heard any wolves howling. Seen some loons and a few beavers, but. You know, it always makes a trip when you can catch a moose or hear a wolf howl or you can better see one if you can. Fish on! Look at that big old mouth. So I'm on my fourth day of the trip. Is that right? Fourth day of the trip. And I already lost my two deep diving husky jerks, which are kind of my go-to trout bait. So I need just a lake trout in order to complete the Grand Slam, but the deepest diving baits I have now are just normal shallow husky jerks, only dive about five feet, which is what I'm using now, and uh, shad wraps, number seven shad wraps, which maybe get eight to 10, depending on your speed. So. I'm not feeling super great about my lake trout opportunities. You might be wondering why I didn't bring that many lures. Well, I generally am traveling so fast that I only need a handful of lures, mainly trolling baits. Hindsight being 2020, knowing I was gonna be up here for 10 days and on some mega fishing lakes, I probably should have brought a few more plugs. I'm officially passing my last bailout opportunity down into Agnes and out. That takes you directly back to Prairie Portage, more or less. Once I pass this, my next bail is Kashapiwi, which is a considerably longer route, but I'm definitely not ready to drop down Agnes because I'd be out multiple days early. There you go. Just 
fell out. All right, first walleye of today. Getting really close to, uh, what do we got here? Kosh Peewee Creek. So again, approaching my last bailout point before I move into uh, Chattered and Russell on into Sturgeon. This corner of Kanipi got burnt, I believe last year in the fires. Looks fairly recent, but um, I'm gonna be seeing a lot of burn once I get to the west side. So, hate to see it burn, but it's all just a, a natural thing. Water's up pretty high, so just not really sure what the intended route is. I don't see any portages though. I'm just gonna go for this. Thought about running those for just a second. It's always deceiving. It looks pretty small and uh, it's a giant rock right in the middle that splits the river and it's pretty much a sure flipper unless you get lucky. So, eh, I just can't take any risks. Glad I scouted it first. Mont have a smoke portage right now. Beautiful little portage around some huge water. I just got off of Split Rock Falls. Beautiful fall, just in the middle of nowhere. Next up is Chatterton Falls. I know I've already been down the falls chain, but this feels like this could be called the falls chain too. Absolutely gorgeous pockets of lakes and nice falls, so. I don't know, this is just as, just as pretty as the last one, so loving this area. Russell Lake. I ended up portaging in past Sturgeon Rapids. It looks totally runnable. The more I look at it, the more I wish it would have just ran it, but I'm so far up in the park right now. I mean, it's a lot closer to add a token, the Canadian entry points than it is from the US entry points at this time. So to screw up right now, sink my canoe, hurt myself, I'd be screwed. I'm entering Sturgeon Narrows now, part of the Malign River. 
hoping to find a campsite within the narrows here just to kind of have some protection to save all my energy for sturgeon tomorrow it's a massive lake similar to Conippy. i don't know size comparison it's long and goes east to west where Conippy is more bays and stuff but it's uh well known it's pretty shallow in spots so it's well known for um being really rough on windy days this looks like my campsite Super cool little tiny island in the middle of this narrows of Sturgeon Lake. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this. First time we're in a bug net. And these mosquitoes are out of control this morning. Holy cow. getting out of here man I've been carrying around this bug net for probably the last five years never put it on it's never really had the need got permethrin on my clothes got bug spray if needed and uh, well, it's been fine but this morning trying to get ready make coffee and stuff holy cow I don't think I would have just had to skip it and make coffee out in the canoe because that was brutal Islands back behind me, great spot for the night. Never stayed on an island that small, so it was kind of, kind of cool and intimate. You can walk around it in about 30 seconds, and everything you need is there. So, anyway, awesome night on the Sturgeon Lake. I have a, I just lucked out. Somehow got an east wind in June, south, south and east. So it should be at my back the whole way. It's a uh, 5.40 a.m. And this lake's about 10 miles long, so I'm gonna get past this thing as quick as I can. Pretty much Sturgeon Lake is pretty close to dead center in the middle of Quetico Provincial Park. So basically, I'm in a million acre park and I'm right in the middle of it so there's no towns, ranger stations, or roads. I don't know, I'm just estimating at least 20 miles in any direction from where I'm at right now. Maybe more depending on which way you're looking. Um, but it's just kind of kind of crazy to think that you're not this far away from really any other humans unless they happen to be out paddling like me. So, I don't know. It's a little eerie, but uh, exactly what I was looking for. To the right of me here is a, a giant island called, or it's named Scripture Island. And uh, I'm in a little channel between the island and uh, the mainland. And there's a lot of current even right through here from the Malayan River, which is kind of interesting. So I think this is its main path, but there is a much larger wing that goes around the other side of the island as well and gets into uh, what you're going to see when the lake opens up. I barely even scratched the surface of this lake so far, but it's a perfect spot with this current in this. Oh, I got another one on. Jeez. What I was saying is it's a perfect spot to catch a lot of fish. And if this is a walleye, it's a better one. A little better. Coming into another nice pinch point here. Um, 
I don't know if there's going to be any main Malign River current because I'm kind of going off to an edge just to stay out of the wind. The wind's turning a little bit south instead of east. So I'm going to hug the south shore so I can avoid as much wind as possible. Let's see if there's any fish in here. Even if there's a breeze blowing through here, that might be enough current to hold some fish. Nice fish. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Barely hooked. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. There's another 20 plus. I'm gonna show you my trolling setup just in case anyone was wondering kind of how I how I set this up while I travel long distances and still catch a bunch of fish. So I kind of keep a front day pack here, map, phone for navigation, snacks even. And then obviously that's where my tripod normally is, looking forward or back. And then um, got my rod out here. You want to keep it as low to the water as you can just to gain depth. And then all I do is I put a little loop here to drop it in. And then when I get a bite, I just pull that back and I'm most of the time I'm off like that. So it's a easy, lightweight rod holder and it works perfect for trolling. Really hooked. Big walleye. Get a net on. Oh, hook fell out. Look at that big blue beauty. Look at that blue tail. Woo! 25, 26. Find out. Swam off in good health. I always like to see that. These things are dinosaurs, man. Well, it took me four hours to get across Sturgeon. It's a long, long lake. About 10 miles, I believe, from Sturgeon Narrows, and now I'm about to enter the Malign River again. Got a bunch of short portages around rapids coming up, and uh, kind of had me thinking about this book I'm reading by Sigurd Olson. If you've heard of him, he's uh, basically cut his teeth in the Quetico Superior area. Awesome paddler and great rider. Um, has a bunch of books related to canoe in the wilderness. Anyway, I'm reading one about him and some friends going down the Churchill River called the Lonely Land. And it just made me laugh because he made the comment that uh, First Nations people won't paddle or won't portage a single step further than they have to. So they will set up their portages around these big dangerous rapids as absolute close as they can. And he was just mentioning how it make you a little nervous when you get close to those rapids and and uh, you start getting sucked toward them and the portage is just right there and you got to go fast and that's kind of how I'm feeling or how I've been feeling this trip is some of these portage areas are a little a little close to the uh, rapids for my taste This one, because it's right there, right next to the fall, which seems really close. This high water is just kind of tough to tell where to put in and put out. They're saying, no, the portage dens, they're saying to run these rapids. 
and it looks runnable but as you can see it's pretty still moving pretty fast but I think I can get down there and hopefully be able to eddy out as soon as as soon as I get around the corner for the next portage can't tell if this is where I need to pull out or if I can keep going going oh got some strainers I need to get out wide here real quick I think we're all right a little risk but worth it I think I just skipped my last portage for the front of the river That's the thing with running rapids is once you're committed, there ain't no stopping. Gets the heart pumping. Tanner Lake. Stopped at this little island to uh, just get my fishing rod back out and uh, saw some pretty cool stuff. First things first, look at the, all these just uh, stretches of quartzite everywhere along this rock. Just huge chunks that came up when the lava flows were here millions of years ago. And even cooler, and I didn't even know about this, an old log chain. Something to pull, something to uh, pull, pull logs down the river. Just picked up a walleye. Tina is basically the Malayan River. Flattens out. It's a good eye. Flattens out quite a bit. It's like really low lands and it's almost completely burnt. There's a few live trees, but out in front of me here is just all burnt, even the island. So it must have got really hot to jump this water. I'm gonna go look for the eat em up portage, see if it's even passable. If it's not, then I'm gonna have to keep pushing through Tanner. So I've got a little more river, river travel to do on the line, and then I'm going to break off down a small creek into Min. The name of the creek is appears to be unnamed, so as long as I can find it, that's all that matters. when you get back in places like these way off the beaten path in the middle of nowhere on these creeks you're just like man could anyone find me back here if they had to it's beautiful back here though love it but man it feels it feels wild out of those portages with like 100 mosquitoes on me. I think I might have to don the head net again. It's bad back here in these beaver ponds.
I think it's fair to say not a lot of people go this way. I just barely found that portage. What a mess. Tons of moose sign over here. And even more interesting, a bunch of wolf scat and bones. I've definitely found myself a wild portage. More wolf poop. And finally, Min Lake. I feel like I should explain my route in a little more detail as far as how I got to uh, Min Lake. Um, so the Hunter's Island Loop, the, the normal route goes along the Maline River, just as I've been doing, and then goes into Lac La Croix, which runs along the border down south into uh, Iron, Crooked, um, Basswood Lake, and Bracken Prairie Portage. So that's, th this one I'm considering a modified, because instead I, uh, I attempted to go through the Eat'em Up Portage. It's about 1,100 meters, or over 200 rods, um, but I got about 50 rods up it, and it was just flagging tape and tall grass and there was no way I was gonna take that on because then it goes onto the Darky River and you have no idea if it's burnt. The rangers couldn't tell me at Prairie Portage. Um, there's just a lot of unknowns. So I fully intended to walk it the whole way. But once I saw that the trail was gone and it was just flagging tape, I knew that was a bad choice. So I carried on through Tanner and then I cut down into men along the beaver ponds and creeks and which is a legitimate way to get down here it's uh not very well traveled portages were pretty rough and wild um but not bad not too long so anyway i'm at men um this is my intended route if the eat em up portage wasn't gonna work and i'm going to continue to work my way along the interior of quetico but kind of following along the edge of the border, just like I was doing the actual um, the actual border route. But I want to stay in Quetico the whole time because I've already done all the border licks. I've done Lac Lacroix, I've done Iron, I've done Crooked, done Basswood, done Knife. So I really want to spend all my time in Quetico on this trip. So that's how I'm at Min Lake, and I'm going to stay here tonight, and then I'm going to work my way through Fishon. I'm gonna work my way into Darky and Argo and just kind of continue south through Quetico, but yet still kind of following the border. All right, if this is a walleye, it's gonna be tempting to keep it for dinner. Well, well, well. Welcome to Min Lake. This is looking like home for tonight. Tired of looking around and just tired. And uh, I got a fish to fillet. It's walleye again. Hiding in the tent tonight, um, I can't do any more bugs for the day. Every time I go outside, I'm getting tore up by black flies or mosquitoes. Uh, it's not too bad when you're on the water, but when you get too close to shore, those black flies just find you immediately. 
um, and then the mosquitoes have been all over when it comes to uh, the low wind areas so done with the bugs gonna take a break and just chill out in the tent um, enjoy Min Lake really nice lake good fishing lots of bass pike walleye kind of the usual flying style fishing so um, definitely enjoying it and uh, I'm a little sore, to, sore right now, back's a little sore. I uh, just looked at the map, I did 26 miles today, which I believe was my biggest day so far this trip.